Apparently there's a great deal of exuberant celebration on the chat over the fact that we've found a chameleon. This particular chameleon has very kindly not got itself stuck in the middle of a very green bush. MJ, you have used the adjective nice. Well, thank you. Lee, you want me to read it a bedtime story? Well, why don't we do that? I need to just get the spotlight steady. Otherwise, it's not going to be possible. Once upon a time, there were three little pigs. They lived in houses. One was incredibly lazy, one was semi-lazy, one wasn't lazy. The lazy one built a house of straw, the semi-lazy one used sticks, and the one that wasn't lazy built it of bricks. So obviously the straw dude had his uh, house quickly, the stick dude a little bit after, uh, sorry, three little warthogs, not pigs. And the dude who built himself bricks took three or four months over the whole process, but he had a really nice fireplace, a kitchen, three or four bedrooms, uh, all en suite, and of course a, a loft where he used to watch his TV. That's not the point of the story. See, he's turned on, no, he hasn't turned on and started listening yet. Anyway, also another character in the story is this dude called the Big Bad Wolf. Uh, in this particular case, the Big Bad Hyena. And the big bad hyena wanted to eat the warthogs because warthog meat is delicious. And he decided, well, these three dudes, I'm going to eat them one day. So he came up to the dude who was living in the straw house and said, he knocked on the door and he said, <laughs> Shinsongo warthog, Shinsongo warthog, let me in or I'll half an aisle, puff an aisle, blow your house down. Something like that. And the warthog said to him, not by, are you mad? First of all, he said, not by the hair on the side of my face or my chinny chin chin, said the warthog. And the wolf said, at least the hyena said, what a stupid thing to say. And he didn't even bother to huff and puff and blow. He actually just pushed the house over and ate the warthog. Then he went on, he was still hungry because this wasn't a big warthog. He went on to the next place, uh, the stick house, and he knocked on the door and he said, Warthog Shinsongo, Warthog Shinsongo, let me in. And the warthog uh, was sitting next to, well, he had made a sort of stool out of wood and he was sitting on his stool, whittling away a pipe to smoke or something like that. And he said, I corner not by the hair of my chinny chin chin will I let you in. And then the hyena said, well, and then I shall huff, and I shall puff, and I shall blow your house in. And the warthog said, you'll do what? And the hyena said, I said, I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house in. And the warthog said, you mean you're going to blow over my house? And the hyena said, yes, exactly. And the warthog said, well, go for it. And the hyena huffed and puffed, and he blew hard on the sticks. And unsurprisingly, nothing happened. And the warthog started laughing. And the more he laughed, the more angry the hyena got. And eventually the hyena just pushed the house over and ate the warthog, which would have been a simple situation from the beginning. And he was still hungry and irritated, so he went off to the brick house and he knocked on the door and he said, Warthog Shinsongo, Warthog Shinsongo, let me in. And the warthog, who had installed... CCTV camera by that stage looked at these his panel of screens and he uttered an expletive and armed his electric fence uh, at which point the hyena realized that he was slightly trapped because he'd come into the driveway and now the gate was shut and the electric fence was armed anyway the water got onto the intercom and said go away you foul stinking scavenging beast and the hyena said, if you don't let me in, I'll huff and puff and blow your house in. And it was a bit of a repeat from the last time. Warthog said, are you joking? Hyena said, no. Warthog said, well, go for it. Hyena blew. It was a bit stupid because you can't blow a brick house down. And this went on for ages. And I have actually now forgotten how the story ends. <laughs> I think eventually what happened was that... The warthog pushed his panic button 
and the security company came around. This was obviously in South Africa. And so they were armed to the teeth with all sorts of weapons. And the hyena, uh, in his attempt to escape, uh, did himself a nasty injury on the electric fence and the palisade fencing and ended up on the pavement arrested by members of the SWAT team. And that's basically the story. Did you enjoy it, the Chameleon? He doesn't seem particularly impressed by that story. Yeah, Deja Vu, it was a lengthy story, and I'm sorry about that. Let's move on. Uh, the reason it was lengthy, I mean, I did shorten it. The original Three Little Pigs and the Wolf went on forever and ever. I mean, you could put a kid to sleep with that for hours. <laughs> James Richard feels that my heart and enthusiasm weren't really in that bedtime story. They were. I was just trying to tell it in a dry manner. It was obviously too dry. What actually happens at the end of that story? What does the wolf do at the brick house? That's right, he comes, Stefan in FC is correct. He comes down the chimney into a scalding cauldron of boiling water. Now I remember. And then in some versions, miraculously, the two first pigs have survived being eaten by a wolf. Uh, and, in, and in others, only the non-lazy one lives. Right, good. That was a terrible bedtime story for which I apologise. Let's go back to Trisha.